Bula, I'm DJ Toro. Join me every Monday to Thursday, 7 until midnight. The premium classics on Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Tonight, attempted arson, deliberate tampering found in a Sese bus. New company takes over port operations, and police commissioner demands better service in preparation for elections. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate, and you're watching FBC News. A fire which destroyed an Sese bus at Nasole in Asinu earlier this month was caused by an overloaded battery. The National Fire Authority has established the wire running from the battery to the radio caused the fire. However, as Mika Longa reports, there was a far more disturbing discovery of deliberate tampering with the engine. The NFA report is pretty clear that the fire was caused by an electrical overload, but investigators also found that an exhaust pipe, a piece of metal, was jammed into the engine. The night before, Nasese bus owner Jack Kumar claims he received a call threatening to set fire to his fleet. So immediately we reported to that Samabula police station. They took the border phone number because uh, when they ring, uh, my wife rang me and I rang them back and they were not answering. And uh, one of the ladies said, why you want to ring here? The report says the pipe is expected to have been placed by an arsonist to alter the normal running of the engine. It was placed near the throttle, and the increased fan speed helped the fire spread. The NFA report says this finding warrants an investigation by the police crime department. They bring one of my mechanic and his wife and one of their friend, and they had interviewed last before last Friday, three weeks ago, and wait, they were waiting for the fire authority to give the report. Kumar, who runs 65 buses, says he's surprised with all the recent incidents surrounding his business. When we find out that uh, one of the mechanics was arrested from my garage, I was you know, really surprised because uh, I've been running this business for about 15 years. I never had th these things and I never had any mechanics or any, any drivers you know, against me. Now with the National Fire Authority investigations concluded, the challenge for the owners of Nasese buses is to make sure that everything that goes in here is closely monitored. Mikolonga, FBC News. The Fijian government will release the new constitution at the end of next month, almost a year before the elections. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbani Marama stressed this will guarantee political, economic and social rights for every Fijian. Christopher Chand reports. Following months of public consultations, the new constitution is finally ready. At the end of next month, we will be unveiling our new constitution, which guarantees political, economic and social rights for every Fijian for the first time. He was commissioning the FEA's grid extension to remote areas in Navosa this afternoon and found time to speak about rights enshrined in the document. It is a shame some politicians have spread lies about the draft constitution. They've been trying to persuade ordinary people that their rights and land ownership are no longer safe. I'm here to tell you today that this is not the case and that these people will, expose, will be exposed as liars when the final constitution is unveiled. The constitution is being translated in Itoke and Hindi languages. By Nimarama adds, the right to clean water, food and employment are also addressed. Despite what the critics say, that it will take Fiji forward as one nation and provide our children and grandchildren with a much better future than they could ever be expected from the past. The adoption of a new constitution will be a significant step in Fiji's history as we head to elections next year. Christopher Chand, FBC News. Chris now joins us live from Nandi. It's interesting that the Prime Minister was in Navosa. I suppose we should mention this is the first time they've been connected to the FEA grid. That's right, Jackie. Baini Marama did say that supplying electricity to remote areas like Navosa is an important element of the government's vision for the new Fiji. He says this achievement is part of their slogan, We Deliver, and they are, and they are delivering basic services to ordinary Fijians who have been neglected in the past. That's me for tonight, Jackie. Thank you, Chris. 
Australia's deputy opposition leader Julie Bishop has indicated that normalizing relations between Fiji and Australia will be a priority of a coalition government if it's elected at some stage this year. Speaking at the Australia Fiji Business Forum dinner in Brisbane on Monday night, Bishop said it's now time to rebuild the bridges. I know that there will be challenges. I know that there will be a number of issues for us to address. But with the will and the commitment on both sides, I believe that we can achieve whatever we set out to achieve. We encourage Fiji to hold elections, as Commodore Bainy Marama has promised, and we welcome and encourage that commitment. I would like to see, should the coalition be elected, the restoration of full diplomatic relations between Australia and Fiji. I would like to see Fiji welcomed back into the Commonwealth, the Pacific Islands Forum and other forums around the world. Bishop said Fijian Foreign Minister Ratu Inoke Kumbombola's speech at the forum was a timely reminder that there are valuable lessons to be learned. Our ports could soon see more traffic and host bigger vessels as Sri Lankan company Aitken Spence takes over operations from the Fiji Ports Corporation. The multi-million dollar public-private partnership was launched today. Roland Karoy reports. The Fijian government and Aitken Spence are looking to capitalize on our convenient location in the South Pacific. A lot has always been said in the same way as we always talk about you know, moving north to Vanuatu, but not much was done about it. In the same way, we've always talked about the fact that Fiji is uh, centered, you know, in the ge uh, geographically, we're in the center of the South Pacific, but not much was done about it. There was a lot of talk about it. We need to put that into practice. The Sri Lankan company also has its work cut out. We met four large shipping lines who are currently using uh, the port of Sua and Lautoka in Sydney, myself and my colleague Ikram. And... Um, all these shipping lines wants to increase uh, volumes out of Sua. The issue has been, after they sail out of Sua, they go to the uh, they go to the U.S. and they have an issue in regard to the window berthing. So they wanted us to ensure that we turn around the vessels within 24 hours. So we have a challenge there. There's been a commitment that the public-private partnership between FPCL and Aitken Spence will not result in job losses. The intention of the government is to create more employment. Create more employment, create more wealth by increasing more volumes out of the ports in Fiji. Minister for Public Enterprise Aya Said Kayum says this partnership is a win-win situation and one that would position Fiji in the practical sense as a strategic hub in the South Pacific. Roland Karoy, FBC News. A 13-member business delegation from New Zealand is in Fiji looking at opportunities to invest. The delegation, including Fijians in Auckland, met Trade Minister Aizaid Kayum today and were encouraged to join the wave of international investors. Vasita Kotewasawasa reports. The 10-member delegation is led by Fiji's honorary consul in Auckland, Harish Lodia. They are excited about developments taking place here and are keen to be part of the economic process. The business mission, Fijians to Fiji 2013, is an extension of the in initiative to inspire and encourage Fiji business people based in New Zealand to look with new eyes at their homeland as an opportunity to invest, trade or work jointly with businesses currently operating in Fiji. The Trade Minister said this is time for Fijian investors overseas to make use of the opportunities made available. We have a very strong interest uh, shown from, uh, by various investors from various parts of the world, including the USA, Canada, and China, of course, India, um, uh, in, uh, Indonesia, and of course, Australia and New Zealand, who are very much interested in taking advantage of many of the incentives that have already been put in place. But Sayyad Kiyum says they've approved a number of changes which favor investors. Yesterday, Cabinet approved uh, a number of um, uh, changes to the regulations where, for example, we used to have minimum um, investment thresholds in various sectors. If you are a foreign investor and you want to invest in those areas, we've removed those thresholds to encourage more foreign investment. 
The delegation will be here for four days. Vosita Kotewasawasa, FBC News. Coming up, University introduces internet-based medical examination. How would you like to spend your morning? You could spend your morning like this. Or you could spend it like this. Tune in to the morning ride every weekday morning from 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. right here on Today FM, Today's Seed Music. Nimbula, mezango nimi lote na isoro tumboa. Nama kia umina rua kinaona na vya kavi muni tikina vaka rambuka. Rongo mena vya sama kina vipo ka baro takini ndreko malolo. Eno ridi ufiji wana na wongani vya niano. Ngai nama kia okina. Welcome back. You're watching FBC News. No more mistakes and no more excuses. That's the directive from Police Commissioner Brigadier General Iowane Naivalurua. The commissioner addressed his men and women at the second quarter parade in Suva this morning. Abisalome Dokar reports. These men and women are at the front line of keeping safety and security in Fiji. We are the custodians of what is right, doing what is right, and doing it right. Brigadier General Nebolurua says the force needs to step up. The coming year is going to challenge every officer. Towards 2014 is going to be tighter more difficult. You and I are expected to be at the front line of everything, to address all issues, everywhere, anywhere, anytime, to respond quickly, effectively, and we serve the people of Fiji loyally. The Commissioner's trust service to the people is paramount. The complaints, irrespective of how small and minor they are, you and I are required to attend to those reports. And when we attend to those reports, we give the customers, the people, irrespective, irrespective who they are, who they are, feedbacks, feedbacks. There has been some progress in hitting the targets set by the commissioner. On this quarter, second quarter, I'm happy to report that we've been able to achieve five out of the eight. KPIs. 45 senior officers received honors from the police commissioner this morning. Apisolomedoka, FBC News. A 38-year-old caretaker of a school for the deaf in, deaf in Suva has been sentenced to 16 years imprisonment for the rape of a 16-year-old student. The incident happened in 2011 at a hostel in the school where the man was also a Bible teacher. While sentencing, Judge Justice Janaka Bandara said rape has become a frequent offense and the perpetrator abused his position. The caretaker must serve a minimum of 14 years before parole. Two men are in custody at the Lautoka police station in relation to the alleged theft of a manhole cover in broad daylight in Suva. The alleged theft was caught on a CCTV outside a building on Rodwell Road in Suva. A man was seen removing the manhole cover and putting it into a four-wheel drive vehicle. The vehicle was seen driving off a few seconds later. Police spokesperson Ananai Soro confirmed the manhole cover has also been recovered. Lawyer Azim Sahukan has been fined $20,000 for professional misconduct. The Independent Legal Service Commission found that he was guilty of gross misrepresentation on two counts. Sahu Khan's law firm letterhead referred to him as being a buy law, Lincoln's Inn, a prestigious law school in London, England. However, he never sat the final exam and was therefore never called to the bar. Azim Sahu Khan is also not a UK barrister. Commissioner Justice Paul Madigan ordered that he be suspended from practicing law for 18 months and pay a fine of $20,000. He has to pay the fine by the end of August and can't return to practice until March 2015. The Agriculture Ministry's annual event, the Crest Chicken Agriculture Show, began in Lombasa today. It's essential in demonstrating the diversity and richness of Fiji's agriculture industry and economic development. Ritika Pratap reports. The, the event over the years is said to have provided a forum for farmers 
businesses and the government to showcase their products. Huge investments are being planned to reduce poverty and increase the production of locally produced export commodities. Strictly reduce the total import bill for rice, potatoes, dairy products, sheep and beef from 800 plus million to 105 million. The Agriculture Ministry has prioritized its support to some products which are in demand. Rice, potato, dairy, sheep, beef, fruits and vegetables, dal, cassava and ginger. Foreign investors and Fijians returning home are keen to invest in this sector. Government, as I have alluded to earlier, will remain committed to the promotion of the sector because of the role it plays in the nation's stability and security. The show ends tomorrow, but there will be an even bigger one in Lotoka in September. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Fiji's first telemedicine facility has been opened at the Fiji National University in Suva. It's part of the staff wellness program at the university and allows people to contact doctors in India via video conferencing. Patients will connect to doctors at the Apollo Hospital in India and medical staff will help send over diagnostic reports and test results. The Apollo group has selected us in Fiji to lead this initiative is again a show of confidence in Fiji which Apollo group has as well as in FNU as a partner to deliver. Ganesh Chan says this will first be rolled out to staff of FNU and then facilities to the public. We've reached that time. Jamie joins us now. And you were saying earlier that there are some exciting developments in boxing. Yes, there is Jackie making a comeback of a Monday night fight. Now that's definitely something to look forward to. We'll have the details after the break. Also coming up, a disappointed Nandronga lodges a third appeal. Stay with us. Isambul binaka. Pedango wadi sori ndalai. Nama kiu mani wasi ningono poroto kina lali ne kabi. Mai na tolu kina bitu. Ena moni tiki na poro mbuka. Ena mbula FM. Namban dua na serre. Suraj ki pahili kiran ke saath din ki shuruat ki jie. Subha ka mangal prabhat aap ko shub ho. Subha subha ho khushiyo ka mila. Na logo ki parva na dunia ka jamila. Panchiyo ka sangeet ho aur mausam albela. Mubarak ho aap ko ye khub surat sabera. हर सोमवार से लेकर शुक्रवार तक सुबह छह से लेकर नौ बजे तक शामिल रहें रेडियो फिजिटो पर हम सफर में रविंद्र सिंह के साथ वेलकम बैक टू एफबीसी स्पोर्ट्स Nan Runga will file a third appeal with the Fiji Rugby Union after its second appeal was dismissed by the parent body. Nan Runga is unhappy after being given a negative five point start in the Digicel Cup when they failed to play Naita Siri in the opening round. Going through the, uh, the the response uh, that they still uh, still stand with the decision that they've uh, made earlier in the year, uh, as we come as we draw closer to the uh, end of the uh, competition, uh, with the time uh, taken to, uh, to 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 decide on the appeal uh, uh, and the decision that they uh, they made uh, in regards to that first round competition, uh, it, it was very very uh, disappointing. And um, yes, we will we will uh, surely uh, go for a fair appeal. Meanwhile, the Fiji Rugby Union says a decision on the protest by Tai Levu against Nomosi will be released tomorrow. Deported Mba football striker Sunny Issa says he will be back in the country soon to continue with the men in black. Issa, who was told to leave by the immigration department after his visa expired, was a key player for Mba. The departure means Issa will miss out on playing in the Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants. This Saturday, Navy and police will battle it out for the 100th edition of the Escort Shield. With all the hype building for the two teams as they vie to be crowned the centennial champions of Suva Rugby, it's still anyone's guess who will walk off the field as champions. Hinder Singh has more. First tackler, they take him to the ground, he's pushed another couple. It will be a feast of rugby when the 100th edition of the Escort Shield takes place this Saturday in Suva. Tagged as one of the most prestigious titles on the local club scene, the Suva Rugby Union is excited about the events planned for the day. It's a very big day for Suva this Saturday. We have uh, two big teams, the two teams that uh, top the competition at the end of the round robin competition. Uh, police, uh, it's quite a long time that they had uh, laid hands on the Scotchill. It's over 15 years now. 
and uh, Navy winning it twice uh, in 2000, uh, 2001, 2002. They'll want to defend the trophy uh, this year. It's been a season which has been termed as one that has taught the officials a lot. And added to that is that it is the 100th year celebrations which added more sparkles to the way things have been running. The season has been an exciting one, uh, especially for us as administrators. Uh, we've had our highs and lows, but uh, we thank the clubs uh, for their support uh, during the year and we look forward to their continued support uh, next year. Navy will defend its title against a rugged and unpredictable police outfit. One thing is for sure, the disciplined forces will definitely come out in full force. Interesting FBC Sports. The coming two weeks will be a very busy time for Fiji sailing as Hobie Cat racers from around the world compete in Pacific Harbour for the Oceania Championship and the Fiji Open Challenge. With the Fiji sailors using these events as a build-up for the Pacific Mini Games, targets have already been set. Shelvin Chand has more. It will be top-class Hobie Cat action at the Uprising Resort from this weekend. Sailors from as far as Brazil have come to compete against Fiji's best. A lot of international teams coming in. The uh, two of the top teams are in already. The top Brazilian team is in and uh, also Aaron Worrell, the Australian team, is a uh, four-time world champion. He's arrived. And so it's going to be some pretty tough competition in the top end there. After the Oceania Championship, things will get interesting for the sailors as they go on for the long distance challenge. Uh, five days of long distance in uh, jumping island, island jumping. Um, this year the course will take us up east to, uh, towards uh, Lulavia and Nangani and Ovalau uh, and back to Suva. So it's a fairly, fairly long distance and that's the, the total challenge. The team for the Pacific Mini Games is ready and their target has been set. We'll take gold, silver and bronze, we'll take the whole lot, but we've only got two, two boats uh, and there will be three medals up, obviously, and uh, I guess there's the individual medals, there's the team medals. Um, so, yeah, yeah we've, we've got a strong team and um, there's no reason why we can't uh, perform well. The two events starting this Friday will put Fiji a notch up in the world of sailing, as the TV crew from ESPN is also coming. Shalvin Chan, FBC Sports. Monday nights will not be the same when the Fiji Boxing Commission brings back Monday night fights starting next week. Amateur clubs will converge at the venue selected and pit their boxes against each other. This is the first step by the Commission to revive the sport. For almost two years, amateur boxing had been virtually missing from the sports calendar. Monday night fights are back and this, the Boxing Commission believes, will help them achieve their Olympic dream. We are back to Monday night fights. Monday night fights is a thing uh, that was famous in uh, amateur boxing in the sport here in Fiji for many years. With the impasse between the Boxing Commission and the Fessenok over, amateur boxing is all set to get international recognition. We are not here to run amateur boxing to the end. We're just trying to clean it up, get the competition underway, and then work together with Fasenok to get a guideline and a, gui and, and a gateway back to Aiba uh, for international competitions. That's why I said, that being sorted out, we are ready for competition. One of the top boxing clubs in the country is looking forward and hopes that this way more boxers get international bouts. And now amateur has come up. Uh, this is the this is the door for any good boxer. You know, like if you want to come up in the world, you got to start from amateur. So now the Fiji is amateur. Like uh, the boys, they will start motivating themselves again and then uh, taking that step to becoming like a really good fighter in the future. Monday night fight starts August 5th, which is next week, with the police and army. A week later, other clubs will join in. Shalvin Chan, FBC Sports. Well, if anyone's looking for a sparring partner, Jackie here is thinking of taking up boxing now. Ah, uh, but I must warn you, I have a killer left hook. <laughs> well, that's something I'd pay money to see. Well, that's it from Sports Tonight. Good evening. Amalgamated Telecom Holdings has had a tough financial year with the group posting a net loss of $34.6 million. This has been caused by the disposal of $69 million worth of equipment by Vodafone Fiji and impairment of $7 million worth of assets in Fintel. In Vodafone's case, the loss on disposal was the result of the early completion of Vodafone's nationwide 3G network. 
Sales for ATH did grow by 8% with total revenue of $270 million in the last financial year. $6.3 million were paid out in dividends, but retained earnings dropped by 35%. And here's Jen to give us the usual bad, I mean weather. Clever little slip there, Jackie. Considering you have a killer left hook, I'll pretend I didn't notice. Now, the rain seems to have died down as forecast yesterday. We had a little cloud in the usual centers, but all in all, a nice clear day. And look at that. Temperatures seem to have normalized. All major centers are in the 30s, with Suva being the exception. 29 degrees in Fiji's first city is the lowest. Another clear, fine day is expected tomorrow, so make the most of it. Those of you heading out to sea are likely to encounter moderate to rough seas, so take care. Now, tonight's photo is of Mount Washington in Kandavu. Leonard Kwan Singh captured this beautiful sight on board the Fiji Princess. And here's a bit of trivia for you. Mount Washington is 822 meters high. Wow. That was weather. Keep sending in those photos to citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. Till the next one, stay safe and stay smiling. Thanks so much for that, Genevieve. Tonight's headlines. Fire investigations found there was a deliberate tampering with the engine of an assessor bus that caught fire earlier this month. Sri Lankan company takes over ports management, promising more revenue and no job losses. A New Zealand trade mission looking for new business in Fiji. This week's poll question in We Ask, is it still relevant for Fiji to be part of the Pacific Island Forum? Visit our FBC website, www.fbc.com.fj, to take part. Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. That's your news tonight. See you again tomorrow. Mother Manda. Mm. Mm. पांच पांच बच्चे होंगे पांच 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 हाय मैं हूँ आपकी सहेली वेनु सुनते रहेंगे मिर्ची एफएम मैं हूँ ना नौ से बारह बजे तक